Okay, so what's better than having a can of soup or a can of chili for lunch? Well, the only thing that I can imagine is having a nice math word problem that goes along with your nice warm meal. And that's what I have for you right here. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. A label covers one third of the side of a can, four inches wide and six inches tall. What is the surface area of the label? All right, so that is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator. And if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to go through the solution here step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so hopefully you have a good sense of what's going on here. And the question again is, what is the surface area of this uh, label on this lovely can of maybe it's soup, maybe it's chili, just pick your favorite food. Let's go to take a look at the answer. The correct answer is approximately 25.12 inches squared. All right, so I say approximately because uh, you could have a different answer, but it's going to be pretty close to this uh, uh, number right here. And remember, we are talking about surface area. Uh, so our units of measure uh, were in inches in terms of the width and the height of this can. So our area is going to be in inches squared. Okay, so if you got a answer somewhere uh, close to this, well, that's a good indication that you knew what you were doing. And we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a professional certified expert in finding the surface area of a cylinder because that's what we're dealing with. We're talking about a can right here. And in order to figure this problem out, we have to be able to find the surface area of a cylinder, but really we're talking about the side of a cylinder. And of course, uh, to find the surface area of the entire cylinder, well, it's not that much more difficult than finding the surface area of the side. But uh, anyways, this is the whole idea behind this problem. And of course, we're going to want to see a nice sketch that represents the situation. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is obviously read the problem. And you want to read a math problem, uh, any problem uh, for that, at least three times. Even if you know what the problem is, you're like, oh, I understand. There's information in the problem, and you just want to double, triple uh, check that you're not confusing information and you understand uh, precisely what the question is. So we have this label that covers the side of a can, okay? Now this particular label doesn't go around the entire can, it only uh, covers one third of the side of the can. And then we have the dimensions of this can, it's four inches wide and six inches uh, tall. And I guess I should uh, uh, made uh, this perfectly cl uh, clear just in case there's any uh, issues with language. A can is a round uh, cylinder uh, type of object. All right, so we want to know what the surface area of this label is. So once we understand the problem, it's a good idea to model uh, this problem visually. And of course, we can come up with a lovely sketch. So here is my sketch. And uh, I'm going to call my uh, uh, food here math soup, because if you eat this stuff during lunch, boy, you're going to do so good on your exams later on in the day. Now, a lot of you might be saying, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, enough with the comedy. Just stick with the math. You know, you're not that funny. Well, listen, I have to try to uh, make everybody relaxed about learning math because people get too serious far too often. Anyways, uh, this is my lovely can of math soup, and let's go ahead and see what we're dealing with here. Now, I have a nice figure, but anytime you're uh, doing a sketch of anything, all right, try to be as neat as possible. You don't have to be a perfect uh, artist. So uh, it does help, by the way, if you um, have some basic skill in drawing 3D objects. That's very useful in solving um, kind of basic geometry problems. But even if you are not all that artistic, don't worry about it. Just come up with something that, you know, basically seems to uh, 
you know, resemble the situation. Okay, so here is my can, can of whatever. It's four inches wide, six inches tall, and then I have this label. Okay, of course here, my label says math soup, and it takes up only one third of the side of the can. It doesn't go all the way around, and the object here is to find the surface area of the label, okay, which of course would be this part. So how do we do this? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Okay, so what we need to do is find the surface area, the entire side of the can, okay? Uh, and basically, if I can find the surface area of the entire side of this can, uh, then I just take one third of that and that's pretty much the answer, right? Okay, so how do we find the area of this uh, uh, label, okay, or the side of the can actual, actually? So the surface area of the side is effectively going to be a rectangle, okay? You need to kind of uh, imagine this for a second. If you unraveled, let's say I had a label that went all the way around this can, okay? Well, it would have this length, okay, and this uh, width. Now, it, it all depends on what you want to call the length and the width, but effectively, we would have some sort of long, I'm just going to draw it right here, some sort of long piece of paper, and we would take this thing and we just wrap it around the can. So effectively, this thing is uh, nothing more than a rectangle, okay? And we already know one side of this rectangle or one dimension of it. We'll call this the length, the height. It doesn't make a difference. We already have this. Well, as a matter of fact, let me draw this again. I should have just uh, been a little bit more patient. So we already know this dimension right here. Okay, this could be the width, um, if you want to call it. And matter of fact, uh, really, to be better off here, I think I could have done this a little bit better. Okay, I'm going to call this the width because this right here, the length will be longer, right? So you probably caught that and you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, fix your math work. Okay, I heard you. Uh, so let's continue on. Okay, so this is the width of our label and the length is going to be longer, right? So the length is going to be this wraparound distance. Okay, what is the wraparound distance? What's the distance it takes to wrap around a circle one time? Okay, well, hopefully you understand that that is something called the circumference. Okay, that is the wraparound distance. That's the distance it takes to travel around uh, a circle one time. Okay, so that is the circumference. So the circumference is equal to this lovely formula, the diameter, which is effectively the width of the circle times pi. Okay, so this is our strategy. Okay, now that we know how to get the length of this rectangle, this piece of paper, if you will, uh, that could wrap around this thing. Now, but remember, uh, we don't need this entire area. Okay, we only need one third of it uh, because that's the actual uh, uh, label in this particular problem uh, in terms of the surface area. But if we can get the entire uh, surface area to the side and just take one third of that, then we are good to go. All right, so that's the strategy. And if you didn't know how to do this um, problem initially, maybe you want to kind of rework your uh, efforts, no big deal. But let's go ahead and take the next step, which, of course, is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I wouldn't ask if it wasn't that important. Now, yes, it's important to me, and I appreciate that. But my goal is to help others, okay? And the only way I can reach more people is by the algorithm saying, hey, you know what? Uh, that guy seems to have a lot of new followers. It really does help. It basically helps my videos go further out in YouTube because I'm trying to reach people that are struggling in math or just interested in mathematics. But like one of the things that drives me the most is to prevent anybody out there from quitting on math. This is the worst thing that I've seen over decades of teaching is that people just come up with these like, you know, these uh, uh, false images of themselves and it's basically, oh, I'm bad at math, you know, I just, uh, I'm bad at math, I can't do this stuff. That's absolutely not true, okay? What you need is encouragement, okay? You, you need uh, math taught in a way you like and understand and uh, in a way that makes sense, okay? Oftentimes math is taught in an overly technical manner and of course we get frustrated, we don't know what's going on, but you yourself, have to put in the effort, okay? And of course, you know, if you're willing to do the work, uh, you will become successful in math. By the way, let me uh, mention very briefly, for those of you that are interested in kind of relearning math or maybe revisiting math, I just created a brand new course. 
It's called my Math Skills Rebuilder course. You'll find a link to it in the description uh, below, but it's a really great course to kind of get back into, you know, uh, basic math, algebra, geometry, and it's a self-paced course. You can take your time. Anyways, thanks for listening to me, and now back to the problem. Okay, so here is our situation. Here's our lovely can of math soup. Now we know it's six inches tall, four inches wide, and we have our strategy, right? Our strategy is we are going to find the surface area of the entire side of the can, and then we'll just take one third of that. All right, now going back to um, this previous uh, little drawing, and I'm gonna mess with my work right here. Remember we had this rectangle. We know that this rectangle is six inches, uh, the width is six inches. Now to find the length, that is the circumference. Okay, so that's what we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to find this length around the can. And so that's why we're finding the circumference. Okay, so the circumference is equal to the diameter times pi. By the way, there is another uh, formula for the circumference. It's two pi r, two times the radius uh, times pi, uh, two times the radius is indeed the diameter or the width of a circle. So uh, the circumference is gonna be equal to diameter times pi. So the diameter here, or the width is four, so four times pi. Now here is where we're going to make a uh, big, big move, okay, in terms of our answer. So pi is what we call an irrational number. It's a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. So this is where we have to be very careful with our answer. So in other words, pi, this hugely important number, and pi comes from uh, taking the circumference of any circle and dividing it by the diameter. Okay, so you can see that in this equation right here, this formula. But uh, pi has infinitely many uh, digits. Okay, and we don't, they don't repeat and they never terminate. This is the definition we call an irrational number. So we obviously can't write down all the digits of pi. Okay, so you're going to have to make an estimation. Now, the more digits of pi that you use, the more accurate your answer is going to be. Okay, but nevertheless, if you choose to use an approximation for pi, your answer will be a, an approximation as well. So if you wanted the exact uh, surface area, let's suppose this answer or this question said uh, calculate the exact surface area, then you would have to just leave this pi symbol alone. Okay, so uh, anyways, this is important for those of you that are out there still taking tests uh, or learning, you know, more advanced mathematics. Okay, so anyways, I'm going to uh, approximate pi for 3.14, and that is the most basic decimal that you would want to use. You never really want to use anything less than that, okay? All right, so 4 times 3.14 is uh, 12.56. So this is our circumference, okay? Now, or effectively what we just found was the length here, okay, of this rectangle, this piece of uh, paper that we could wrap around the entire can. Okay, so that's approximately 12.56 inches. So we are uh, working with the units of measure of inches. So now let's go ahead and multiply that by the width. In this case, that is six, okay? So the surface area of the entire side of the can is gonna be uh, six times uh, 12.56, okay? And that is the surface area of the side of the can. And when we calculate this, it's still gonna be approximately, and remember, uh, we're using uh, correct symbols here. I'm not saying equal because that and uh, basically implies that this is the actual 100% full answer. No, it's just an approximation. So the surface area of the side of the can is approximately 75.36 inches squared. Don't forget about those uh, units of measure squared. That's really important. And we know that our lovely label, okay, is only one third of the side of the can. So one third of the side of the can or the surface area of the side of the can is our label. So one third of uh, this, okay, or the, of our side of the can, which is 75.36. One third of that, we just take this, divide by three, and we get 25.12 inches squared approximately. Okay, so hopefully this was an exciting uh, math prom. Now, some of you might be saying, boy, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you really do love math. You must find it so fun and interesting. Well, I'll be honest with you. Some things are interesting. Some things are you know, it's like anything else. You know, I have uh, certain topics and certain uh, things that I love to learn in math, but it's all, I think, um, interesting to me when I see all the pieces kind of come together, okay? And this is uh, especially true for those of you that like geometry because you need algebra, okay? But here's the deal. If you truly want to learn math, you have to learn it in order. You got to work on those basic math skills. 
and everything counts, okay? All, there's that old adage that doubles in the details. It's the same thing in math, okay? All these little tiny things cannot be ignored. So that's why you have to be extremely focused. But uh, anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.